Grief is walking around the house without being present, as if life can't touch me. Because when I think of my love not being here, it makes no sense to be here. I have nowhere else to go though, and for now, there is nowhere else I want to be. My brother Detlef and my husband Richard died 18 months apart, exactly. My name is Heike Mertens, and this is my grief story. As overwhelming as it can be when we're grieving, and it feels like it may never end, it does become just a part of our life story. I was fortunate enough to meet some wonderful people on my grief journey. They're gonna help me do that, pulling back the curtain a little bit and showing you a little bit about the grief process. It's things that you find around the house that bring back the memories. Uh, and then I found out I wasn't the only one that cries. I suddenly didn't know what I was supposed to do, what I could do. All of a sudden, you were alone. Uh, people were with you all the time for the first month, and then nobody. My brother and husband both had cancer. They both were ill for 18 months. And when I lost them, I lost two rocks in my life. So when that happened, three years of this chaos that kind of ensued throughout that period, after it was all done and I was alone, that's when I started to grieve. And then I learned. I learned a lot about grief. And the biggest takeaway, or what I learned, I would say mostly at that time, was that we really don't understand grief until we've had a major loss in our lives. And I think that that's a mistake. When we grieve, our lives suck. We don't tell the children, grown or otherwise. We don't tell our friends and we don't tell our parents. We believe they would worry or possibly not understand. This is how we feel and there is no joy in our lives. We hope that this will change, though it seems like it's going to take forever. It only changes when it's ready to, regardless of what we do, but I hold on to the hope that it will. Well, just being alone and uh, the amount of people you used to know disappeared and it was just an emptiness for a year, that's all. The reality faced me. Loneliness was the new norm. It's a hard process, but if you don't do it, it'll come back and bite you in the arse, I guess, later on, because you have to do the grieving process no matter how hard it is. Part of the reason that culturally we don't understand grief is not just you have to experience it to fully understand it, but also that we don't talk about it, we don't really have any images of it, uh, if you Google grief, this is the kind of thing that comes up. We have lots of Instagram posts. Some of them are consistent and then some of them are contradictory. Most pictures are of funerals or of people weeping. And that's a very small part, though it's a very intense part of what grief is. And so I think the best way for us to move forward with this is that we're going to have to talk about some of the idiosyncratic things that happen when we grieve. Being on my own and um, not having somebody to share with anymore. So helpless and how much you miss them and how many times you wish you had done things possibly a little different. You're already feeling vulnerable and you're already feeling hurt. So you don't necessarily want to turn to somebody who's in your usual support group and say something like, I'm not sleeping and it's six months down the road, or um, I'm still forgetting where I'm going when I'm in the car, or I have to really remind myself to eat, or I no longer want to eat healthy foods. All I want to eat is pizza and drink wine. At some point, socially and societally and culturally, we have this belief that it's kind of 
move, we kind of move on from it. And that's in itself an issue because it's not really about moving on, it's more about moving forward. It's taking these experiences and finding a new way to go forward with it. And one of the hard things I think about this whole process is that it creates a great deal of isolation. And the isolation is because, again, we don't talk. And because of that, that is in part why I wrote a book on some of the crazy things that happened. They're my personal journal entries where I was just trying to document and make sense of the many different things that happened. And I was really very, very lucky because it, I can't tell you that I wrote them down and they suddenly made sense to me, but at least I had words for them. And that was the first step. But the second step was I was very lucky in that I had some great people supporting me. I had, you know, uh, healthcare practitioners, I had grief counselors, and I had a phenomenal um, walking group where I lived that was other people who were grieving. And that gave me a safe place to go and talk with people who were safe and ask questions about things like, have you ever heard this happening? You know, and the answer always was yes. This is all normal. When you go anywhere, drive yourself so you can leave without having to rely on anybody else because you know, a lot of times you're just going to get like freaked out and you just want to go home. You're not alone. There's other people that are going through the same th thing and that you're not crazy. <laughs> Be very patient with yourself. What people could do in a way was let you talk and let you express how you felt rather than trying to say there there let's go out for lunch it will ease you will never forget but you will feel much better you have good memories that will eventually overcome the sad ones hope and joy do return i am so grateful to have met these people I am so lucky in a way to have them in my life. It's not a, something I would wish on anybody to go through this to find these sorts of people, but I am truly grateful that they're there. They have in many ways become the small stones that have replaced these two rocks and it's because of them that I'm able to go out and talk to people about grief. And the main reason is because as a society and as a community, um, we don't support those who grieve as well as we could. Learning to live again is feeling like I'm walking around with tiny tender shoots of positive emotions poking their fragile heads through the rubble. Hello joy, hello happiness, hello calmness, hello sense of humor, hello, hello, hello.